What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. Monday. Yeah. Hope it's everyone's Monday. doing good. I hope everyone's doing fine because I'm not. Uh, long week. I, I don't even want to like talk about it too much. It's just like um, back in New York. We're back in the studio. We've been in the office for two hours. We thought we were going to record in the new studio. Noah doesn't like the way the cameras look, so we're back in the other studio. <laughs> it's been a frustrating two hours. I'm not going to lie, but we are back in New York. We we came home we'll get Friday. Back in there eventually, yeah, we will get in that studio. Well, we were going to unveil the studio today. Let's yeah. be honest. We were going to that unveil was the it plan. Today. That was the plan. We went in the studio. We sat down. Plans Noah failed. The cameras. Plans failed. Not going to happen. We'll see you. We'll see. We'll, we'll try again next week, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> studio don't on even Wednesday. Put a date on it. I'm not even no, a I'd date get on it. I'm, I'm in that place now where it's like, and no, no. I was gonna say it may never happen, but it will. But just like, I why would you even say that? Because I'm so down. I also would Let's feel like forward. such Let's a be happy. like. I also like would feel like such a brat too if for the people who p- built that room and for us to be like, we're not even gonna record it there. <laughs> We will record in there. That's not going to happen. That's yeah. our studio now. We're going to record in there. Noah just needs to figure yeah, you out the camera. Fi- you just got to figure the it out. camera angles, which is fine. We're going to get gonna there. We're going to make it work. We're just it's not there gonna yet. It's all going to be okay. We're not there yet. It's been a frustrating two hours, but we're here. We are back from LA. Yeah. On Thursday when we recorded the podcast, yeah. I was like, oh, you know, last night in LA tonight. Going Who out knows? to dinner. Going out gonna to dinner. Fun. Who knows? We will yeah. have a crazy night. That we did. Indeed. Crazy night ensued. Fran and I know how to end a trip. That's what we, we do. Realize. We always go out um, like v- very well. Like we always go out with a bang. Like it's a great trip. We we go out hard. The last yeah. night is always like hits harder. It's not than smart. The entire rest of the trip. But I just feel like we finally adjusted to the time and we were ready to go. And it's just like we, we went out to dinner. We met new people. We had a great time. Yes, we did. And I consumed shrooms. Yep. And did not sleep the entire night and went right onto an airplane. And let me tell you, I was struggling. Yeah. I did not. (laughs) I did not. Fran did not. (laughs) Which is why if you saw the video on her Instagram of me kicking her out of my hotel room at 3.30 in the morning. Fran said to me. I was like, either get under the covers and go to sleep or get out of here. I knew there was no way I would fall asleep, so I couldn't get under the covers. And she was just like, "You have to leave." And I, I didn't. I, I gotta to, go to bed. I didn't want to be alone. I was just up and at it, you yeah. know. That sounds. I like, just couldn't keep talking to you. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't shut up. Could I not just shut up. Needed to go to sleep, and you were just a struggle city the whole time on the plane. At one point, we're si- we're sitting next to each other, and she's like in and out of sleep. She's got the blanket over her head. She does have the blanket over her head. She's just like. At one point, you were typing ferociously on your phone. Like, I was like, are you okay? I woke up from a nap. I look over. You're looking at me like someone in your family just died. And you're like, I have my flask of water, my hydro flask of water next to me. And you just look at me. Can I please have a sip of your water? I was like, yeah, you freak. Just it's literally in my chair next to me. Just pick it up and have a sip. It was if I was or hit the, the call button yeah. so the flight attendant could bring you water. If I was in any other state of mind, I would have just took your water and drank it. Yeah, I was severely struggling, and I have yeah. been severely disoriented ever since that night. Like yeah. I, I, I think I'm changed forever. I don't know. I mean, this sounds like when someone says they stay up all night. Like I put up a picture and I was like, oh, beginning, beginning of the night versus mm-hmm. 12 hours later. People are like, oh, coke. Like I don't do coke. I'm not no. a coke person. It was strictly shrooms. And I, there's nothing worse than when you end up with somebody who didn't do shrooms and you're on shrooms at the end of the night. And that person is like, get out of my room. Get yep. out of my room. I locked myself out of my room in the hotel robe yep. and my slippers. The people were laughing at me in the hotel. It was like 5 a.m. I didn't yeah. go to sleep. It's a whole mess. I, I, let me tell you, I immediately fell asleep as soon as you left. <laughs> I couldn't walk out your door, remember? Yeah, I just I couldn't shut it. I, like, I, I started singing here. It's Over by the Cheetah Girls. It's so like really, over. I could not I deal. I feel so alone. Could not deal. <laughs> It was a good time, Thank though. Thank God for spicy margaritas. Yeah, Fran was downing some spicy margs mm-hmm. to uh, 
deal with my shroomness. Yeah. And other people. Like, I didn't do shrooms alone. No, no, no. We were <laughs> with a, a, a group of people and had a, had a great time. You, so you much know fun. who you are. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this, you know who you are and we love you so much. Yeah. We are forever bonded with these people and I'm going to miss them. I'm, yeah. Rhea's going to start to cry. I'm getting She's, teary eyed. I, we left this group and Rhea was like, I am so sad to be leaving you guys. <laughs> I really was. I feel like we made friends for life. Mm-hmm. So also... I was on Shroom, so yeah, that might yeah. have been that it as well. Probably but affected probably affected that one hundred percent. Either way, it was you know a great trip. All in all, we go out with a bang every time. It was yeah. a great time, and one day we'll be back. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Who knows? I'm all, I mean, it, we also came back to a beautiful weekend in New York. It was lovely. It just like was like oh, the homeland. Feet, I didn't see the outside. On the ground. Yeah, you were this right. weekend. Yeah, okay. Fair. I didn't see the Fair. outside. I slept until six p.m. on Saturday. Yeah. And like I said, time really fucks you up. It really does. My sleep schedule is severely fucked we up. We spent enough days in LA where we finally, like last night, actually, also, yeah, I mean, that's what happens when you stay up at 3 30 in the morning, 6 a.m. at home. You're, you didn't sleep at all. So anytime you don't sleep at all, that's going to fuck it up. So, and then up. add the time difference. Yeah. Whole, bu- whole big thing. The body's adjusting to being home, but it's good to be back. We're happy yeah. to be back in the office. And of course, Not in the we. Studio. Yeah, not in our studio. That's okay. We're going to move past that. <laughs> no one said before he said, I'm going to have a mental breakdown this week. I said, <laughs> you're not allowed to have one this week because I'm having one this week. So you can have yours nope, next week. You got to wait. You have to wait your turn, Noah. You okay. got to wait. He's, <laughs> he's so, he, he won't even speak in the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, know. we need it's... like a couple days of not seeing each other after we go on a trip. And we didn't really get that. Like we're, we got one day and now we're all back. <laughs> Like, I think Friday going to the airport, we all, like, traveling, we spoke maybe three words to each other the entire well, time. Well, me and you spoke. We didn't speak no, to no. I'm saying. Like, as a gr- like, as a group, it was just like, all right, <laughs> yeah. see you guys on Sunday. <laughs> He's got nothing, nothing, got nothing what, to say. What? He's been up against the mic just looking at us. It's kind of he hilarious. No, he okay. doesn't. It's okay. We don't need to talk to him. No, me and you. It's me us. and you, babes. I love you. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the topics for mm. today's show. Hannah Burner announced that she will not be coming to Summer House. James Kennedy proposed to Raquel. Some Vanderpump Rules news. Rita Ora is dating Taika Watiti, new couple. And we have a great conversation with Josie Canseco. I really can't call in an interview because it was just a lot of fun. It was yeah. it was all over the place. We and didn't really ask her too many questions. No, we didn't. We just chatted. We're we're too friendly with Josie yeah. at this point to sit down and have an interview. So yep. it was all, it was a lot of fun. She's an absolute. We played never angel. have I ever. We played never have I ever. It was a lot of fun. Yep. So let's get into it. Starting off with Hannah Burner. So I feel like this is news that everyone was waiting for. Would Hannah Burner be returning to Summer House? Is she not returning? It looks like she will not be returning to. The next season of Summer House, she is not going to spend her time there this summer. Instead, she announced she will be going on tour instead. Yeah, so I I thought that this happened really quickly, but then I just thought about it. It makes a lot of sense. They're going to be recording the new season, filming the new season very soon. Like they, it's the summer. It's almost the summer. So she did post um, an Instagram and wrote that. This past year has been one of the most important in my life for self-reflection, love, and learning a lot of shit. I've welcomed new career ventures, challenges, and obstacles, and opportunities for growth. As we climb out of the emotional trenches of 2020, I look forward to an exciting summer, but with mixed emotions, I'm announcing I won't be spending it living in the summer house. These last three summers have truly been a whirlwind, and the show has, without a doubt, changed my life, and and I will forever be thankful for the platform it has provided me. Making people laugh is what brings me joy, and I am so excited to announce that I will be spending this summer touring my stand-up and telling fart jokes at comedy clubs and theaters near you. More dates and tickets to come soon, but I cannot wait to see you all in person. I know you you were going to say, were you going to say that you hate fart jokes? I hate fart jokes. I know you hate fart. I know you do. I, you know, I, I laugh at a good fart joke every time. I wish I could, and I genuinely can't. Can't I really? I really do. I really do. To me, it's just such low hanging fruit yeah to make a fart joke yeah well. which i get some people think it's funny you know what i yeah. mean i'd never have been that way and that's okay um bat yeah bathroom humor not for you it never is never has been it's for a lot of people it is for um, a lot of people though so i get it yes but 
The this whole- is yeah yeah i don't know I, I i'm sad i'm i actually very sad i feel like the show is going to be very weird without her i agree i thought she was a great addition to this show obviously she, you know people loved her at first did not have a great run this season there were a few things that bothered me about the caption i feel like you know it's a great thing she's going on tour it's good for her that's awesome she's doing what she loves this will let her focus on her relationship as well mm-hmm. she's not going to be spending in the house on camera that's better that way if she feels that way no thank you to the crew in the caption of Summer House. No thank you to the people at Bravo. Look, maybe there's no love lost May- right now. Maybe not, but for me, I feel like you got to throw that out there, you know? Yeah. yeah. She, maybe she, she could, did maybe, say she was so thankful for I, the opportunity. For the platform, the platform you know, but yeah. thankful for the platform, right, not right. thankful for the people who worked right. on the show. And, you know, I don't know. Even the castmates, just to be like, you know, we had our difficulties but like shout out to the cast I don't know maybe I'm just looking for I'm just looking for things to be annoyed at but those are things that just stood out to me that I felt like you know you're leaving a show and it was bad why not just end it on a Right. On a nice note to everybody on your Definitely. way out. Definitely. And I'm sure she'll talk about it on her podcast, too. I bet she'll get into more detail of the whole thing. Because some on Instagram, like, it's a pretty long caption. So I feel like maybe you just want to keep it on the short and... Like, she wanted to keep it not, like, so crazy long. She can get into it more, more on her show. And also, like, I'm sure she's going to keep doing Giggly Squad with Paige. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic. That I will definitely miss them, Paige and Hannah, on the show have always been so great and they've always had that like just best friends dynamic duo which is so needed on a show like that so it's just gonna be weird and it makes me think like who what kind of people are gonna come in now you know do they have people lined up they're gonna need they're gonna need other people i think i feel like she could have had a redemption storyline but at Uh, the end of the day i really wanted that too if she's not feeling comfortable doing that, it is what it is. I also think Des wouldn't want to live in the summer house. Yeah. And they just got engaged. Yeah. Do you think that Bravo didn't ask for her to come back or do you think she left? Um, I don't know. It, that, that always changes for me. Like there's some people and there's some housewives or some Bravo characters that I'm, that I'm always like, oh God, they definitely got asked to leave. <laughs> But, and that's, it's possible, but I just feel like that wasn't, I don't know. I, I don't think that was the case here. Cause I do think that they got so much good drama, quote unquote, good drama from Hannah this past season. And they always want someone who might not be getting along with everyone in the house. When they cat when they go into filming, I can't imagine they're excited about everybody getting along. <laughs> exactly. So I just think that they would want her still. Yeah, I agree with that. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out with Paige. Obviously, she's her own person. She's hilarious. She's amazing. Yeah. And her and Amanda are really close. So it will be interesting to see who comes in, what kind of friendships are made. Yeah. Will they just keep it this group? Is Luke coming back? There's right. so many unanswered questions more girls and other guys they're gonna need more girls they're gonna bring in more guys maybe more, people that are actually more guys i think they need more guys and i think they need people who are actually friends with those people right right which i think they're gonna make happen this time around i'm sure they i can, would hope i'm sure they can find find some acquaintances of of some sort i also think that there's was um there were some other people on winter house that have not been on Southern Charm or Summer House that were like friends of those people. Yep. So I could see potentially someone from Winter House that we haven't met yet be on this season of Summer House because obviously we'll get Winter House before we get Summer House. So it's like we'll meet them on Winter House and then it'll be like, oh, they made this connection on Winter House and then they're going to also film Summer House. That's a good call. I think that could yeah. definitely happen. There I'm was very for, there was some very hot male model that was uh, a part of Winter House that I am forgetting his name, but we've never seen him before, so just toss him on Summer House too. Yeah, I'm excited to watch Winter House whenever that comes out. Yeah. I mean, I hope it's sometime soon, even though they fucking brush that all under the rug and act like they so never weird. put a teaser out. And it was extremely weird. That as was to one why of the weirdest that. teasers that they that Bravo's ever put out. So weird, it like abruptly ended. <laughs> it seemed like they didn't even mean to black. They didn't even mean to air it. It yeah. was very it did strange. Seem like a mistake. 
definitely seemed like a mistake. I feel like nobody from the cast even promoted it. So, yeah. listen, it's sad. Obviously, you don't want to see someone go out the way that no. Hannah's going out. But I think that... It's a new chapter for her. New chapter, career move is a good thing for her. She, you know, she wants to be doing stand-up. She wants to be doing the podcast. She doesn't want to be yeah. on the reality show anymore. And It'll be okay. healthy for her relationship, I think, too. Because... It, it would especially be hard coming on to this next season engaged and not only having to like redeem herself from last season, but then also have to like have Des be a part of all of that as well. So there's an added pressure of trying to keep the connections or keep friendships or try and save friendships, but then also like be worried about another person also. So it it does, like we said, it makes sense. It's sad. We wish she wasn't going, but, you know, it's definitely, I feel like it's definitely the best move for her. Definitely. Let me tell you, it would not have been good for Des to be in that house with them. No, no, I don't think not so. Not at, at all. Yeah. This month is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And in Mental Health Awareness Month, Barstool Sports is proud to support destigmatizing mental health. Uh, so if you didn't know, like I just said, May, very important month. Um, and here at Barstool, we support our veterans, getting the help we need. And now we want to support everyone. I think that... This month is very important and it can open a lot of dialogue and conversation about mental health and we've definitely been speaking about it more here at work which I think is great and making sure that everybody takes care of themselves and checking in on our coworkers and making sure everybody's feeling okay and if they're not making sure that they are getting um, the help that they need and everyone I know that has used better help has has loved it maybe your stress is just like too much to manage right now uh, you're dealing with depression anxiety PTSD whatever it may be you can get some help at better help uh, because without a healthy mind, being happy is very, very hard. So this is for you. Therapy can give you the tools to make life a little bit easier. Therapy is fantastic. Uh, if you have never gone to therapy before, I highly recommend. You may think, what do I need to go to therapy for? I'm good. I'm fine. Doesn't matter. Therapy is still amazing. Um, and if you do feel like you're struggling a little bit, try it out. See how you feel. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash office. That's B-E-T-T. E R H E L P dot com slash office. Quick little Vanderpump Rules news. It looks like James Kennedy and Raquel have taken the next step in their relationship. They're engaged. You know what? Good for them. I know. I know. It's funny because we've been joking so much, right? Like, what are they gonna have happen on Vanderpump Rules? It's there's babies, like where's the drama? We know that they've started filming. We've seen pictures of Lisa filming at Tom Tom. Tom Tom has opened back up, thank God. And now we know that they took a little trip, Coachella, fake Coachella trip, and they and he proposed to Raquel. So that's the and and I I think I forget what episode I said it, but a while back I was like, oh yeah, and you know, and there's Raquel and James. They're also on the show, you know. So this is <laughs> this. Is something they they're they're engaged they're moving um on to a, another part of their life. I, the, people definitely doubted them from the beginning, but they've been together for a pretty long time. And I also got to say, big props to Sheena. Like Sheena, one of the hardest working reality stars. I like she gave birth three weeks ago, and she's just full blown back filming this show like she was on this cast trip she's there with during the proposal I'm, I'm sure they were all there because I'm sure they're all filming but crazy yeah but honestly good for these two yeah I have nothing bad to say about it besides the fact who knows where this will go in the future yeah but as for right now if that's the step they want to take take then good good I guess I mean we haven't heard anything crazy about James lately no. I'm sure we'll see on the show 
how things have unraveled, what has been going on with his life. But I yeah. feel like we always used to hear things about James Kennedy acting like a menace to society. Yeah. And it seems like... It's been quiet for James. Yeah, it's been quiet for James. And maybe him and Raquel are, are in a good place. And it may it seems that way if he's proposing. I don't think someone would propose if yeah. they were in a bad place. So congrats to them. At least we'll get Together something on Vanderpump this season. Some sort of engagement. Yeah. Wedding plan. That's like a go-to, right? When in doubt, just let's get some wedding planning on a, on a season. That's That always gets the people going. <laughs> For sure. Oh, there's drama with the wedding planning. James doesn't want to be involved. Raquel, Raquel's yeah. asking yeah. James too many who's questions. Who's going to be bridesmaids? Oh, who's no. not going to be? Who's going to oh, be invited? No. Who's James not going to be invited? James doesn't know if he wants to get married anymore. Yeah. Ah, he's getting nervous. And yep. then the finale is Ra- Raquel walking down the aisle. Yeah. Something something good. Something along those they'll, lines. They'll cook up we something good. We just wrote good. the season. Yeah, they'll cook up something good for us. Cause who and I and you can take this with a grain of salt. Who knows if this is true or not, but I know that Jax recently did an interview saying where he felt like the last season of Vanderpump Rules was getting too scripted and that's why he and uh Brittany left the show. Sure. Which is another one of those situations <laughs> where it's like, Did you leave? Were you asked to leave? Was this your own choice? I I just, I don't know. I can't imagine Jax w- like turning down a paycheck, right? But I also, having babies changes your whole life. Like they could have had this baby and been like, we don't want to be on this show anymore. You just, you don't, you don't know. But I think saying like, ah, it's got, it got too scripted is like, okay. Yeah, you don't know for sure, but I personally believe they were not asked back. Yeah. Because... <laughs> This is what I'm saying Vanderpump about Hannah. It's, like, it's, been, just, it's just our own opinion. Like, it's our own opinions about the cast member. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, we're like... Well, oh. I mean, part of yeah. me believes that Hannah may have not been asked back. Oh, you think? Yeah. Okay. You know, Yeah. I just... I don't know for sure. That's the... We keep yeah, saying yeah, yeah. we don't know. I think that maybe because the other people have been on summer house longer if they really didn't want her in the house maybe they have more of a say because they've been on longer and Mm -hmm. even though that's you know fucked up at the same time like when people have worked at a place for longer than others they have more of a say and so i don't know for sure i also think it could very well be that she is over this and wants to focus on our relationship and so the same thing with jackson britney do i think jackson britney were not asked back yes but could it be possible that they really just wanted to focus on their kids? Sure. Yeah. Hmm. It's very, it's just, it, it's, it's interesting. And I, like we've talked about a bajillion times, it's watching it and not seeing them with their actual friends or with these, you know, we see all these pictures on Instagram of all of them together with the babies and whatnot. And just not seeing that on the show is bizarre, but, we're going to get all these new storylines, it feels like. Just makes sense that they would have a bigger focus on James and Raquel. We got some pictures of Rita Ora hanging out with Taika Waititi. If you don't know, he's a, uh, a director. He did um, Jojo Rabbit. He's done Thor, Ragnarok, great movie. And <laughs> um, he's a great director. He's very, very, he seems very, very funny, very, very cool. And so we see these pictures of them kind of cozied up. Looks like they're in Australia. And it's just such a random pairing that I love it so much. It's just you put throw some celebrity names in a hat just from all <laughs> fields. Shake it up. Pick two names out. Rita Ora and Taika Waititi. <laughs> yeah, I, when we were going through the topics to figure out what we were going to talk about, this came up and yeah. I was like, oh, you know, maybe we could touch on it, maybe not. Fran was like, let's please talk about it. Just because I want to state the fact that I love this couple, even though they're the most random pairing that you can find. Absolutely. And what's also great is I just feel like Rita Ora has had some of the most random but like awesome boyfriends ever like if you've never dabbled into looking at Rita or his dating history I highly recommend it's very fascinating (laughs) like there's just there's directors actors musicians um and she like she dated Calvin Harris she dated 
uh, Rob Kardashian. <laughs> like, oh my God, I forgot about James, Rob Kardashian. James Arthur, she apparently dated. Also, like sometimes when you Google things, it's just like bullshit, right? Like this Google is telling me she's dated Brooklyn Beckham. When? Brooklyn Beckham's 21 years old. There's like, no what? way that Rita Ora dated Brooklyn Beckham or else that would be highly Justin illegal. Justin Bieber's on here. Was Khalifa ASAP Rocky, Bruno she Mars, Cara Delphi. Like I'm like, this. I don't think this is right. There's an atrocious amount of people on here that I'm like, that's definitely not true at all. But I think Calvin Harris was de- probably one of the biggest high profile ones. Rob Kardashian, too. Yeah. Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa. But I don't know. I just, there's something about. I have. Rito, Rito Oren, Taika Waititi that I love because it's just. Okay. <laughs> I literally have nothing to say about it besides that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there, yeah. there's not much I could say about this couple besides good this for is them. A, this is a good conversation starter for our, our listeners out there. If you have any, um, if you're like a pop culture person, you let, pff, why else would you be listening to this show? <laughs> but if you are bringing up and talking to someone, maybe they're not as clued in, but they love Marvel, but they love Jojo Rabbit, perhaps you could be like, Hey, do you know uh, Taika Waititi is dating Redora? Maybe that's it's yeah, a you know, the director conversation starter. Yeah, it could like, be. Hey, why you like uh, Ragnarok? Great movie. Marvel. It's a great way to throw in that you know directors. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. You know at least one director's name. Yeah, maybe <laughs> like on a your browsing hinge or whatnot, and you just want to like throw oh. out a, you want to throw out a random fun fact at a guy. Hey. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard you say the term browsing hinge browsing hinge just threw me off guard <laughs> people browse hinge <laughs> they do oh, it just i've never heard you say it before <laughs> i was just thinking of a, of a dating app that was yeah, the first yeah, yeah. one that came to my <laughs> mind jump in and say hey you big you it's, big thor fan it's so <laughs> random that they might respect it you're so right that's yeah. actually a beautiful pickup line yeah Try it out. Let me know if it works. Somebody listening must try it out. I bet you there's tons of guys out there who have, like, loves Marvel on their dating profile. Right. Big Marvel fan. Yeah. Hit them with, like, hey, what's what's your favorite Marvel movie? Nine times out of ten people say Ragnarok. Hey, did you know he's dating Reno Orr? <laughs> where do All they, right, I'm done talking where, about I was going to say, where do they go from there? <laughs> because don't we don't even know where we go from exactly. talking about it anywhere you could the possibilities are endless talk about your favorite Rita Ora songs maybe talk about Rob Calvin Harris Rob Kardashian you have no idea that's the perfect way to date somebody yep to talk about Rita Ora talk about Rita Ora <laughs> we have a great interview with Josie Canseco conversation whatever you want to call it and if you're watching on YouTube you will see us having a nice little Ice cold core seltzer with us. Um, I have been hyping up the mango. It was delicious. It was exactly what I needed in that moment because it's just a great way to chill, relax. It's uh, we're talking with Josie. She's our friend. We just wanted to have a cool, casual conversation. And core seltzer, core's light, whatever you choose, it is made for those moments. Coors Light is the only beer out there that's literally made to chill. The mountains on the bottles and cans turn blue and it's cold. You guys know. You want to see those blue, blue mountains every time you open a Coors Light. Coors Light's cold lagered, cold filtered, cold packaged. Like I said, made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. And like I was talking about the Coors Seltzer. Also, extremely, extremely refreshing. They have great flavors, black cherry, mango, lemon lime, grapefruit. I have been on a big mango kick. I really think you should try them. If you haven't yet, they are worth it, and we're getting into those summer months, and a seltzer on the beach, there's really nothing better. So if you ever feel like you're always on the go, you're juggling a million things at once, and all you want to do is just chill, Coors Light is literally made for those moments because everyone loves variety, Coors, you know, now you can have your Coors Seltzer. If you don't want a Coors Light, you can have a Coors Seltzer. Um, like I said, great flavors, black cherry, uh, mango, lemon, lime, grapefruit. You can get Coors Light and Coors Seltzer delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. And always remember to celebrate responsibly. This is coming from the Coors Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado and Fort Worth, Texas. 
All right, everyone, we are here with a special guest. We're in L.A., of course. We're doing the whole L.A. tour, and we got Josie Canseco with us. Finally. Fucking hottie. So hot, Thanks. so beautiful. She showed up. She's so tall, supermodel, of she's course. So tall. She's I, so tall. She's so tall. Yeah. The first I, thing she said, she's I, so tall. No, as soon as she got out of her car, I was like, you're so fucking well, tall. Because Rhea found out she's short, like, a month ago. This hit you a month ago? Yeah. You're also not short. Let's just, let's just clear the air mm-hmm. here. You're not short. You are she's a... <gasps> Fran. She thinks I have she's short legs. Short you have short legs. I have short legs. I'm like a dachshund. I'm like my dog. <laughs> okay, Pokemon I'm number that. one supporter of wiener dog. So you might number oh, one supporter of Rhea. It just is how it works, you know? You're I'm five three. Also, we're a little drunk. Like short. Yeah, whatever. It's not about me. It's about <laughs> Josie. She's here. And this has been a long time coming because a little background really? info. Josie and I met a few years ago. She came to the office when she was dating Mike Stud. And we just like, we randomly did like an Instagram live together. It was fun. Fran, you were like, sick that day you weren't there I wasn't there she maybe i was like trying to go to school i don't know probably at the time we were like still in we were like trying Wait, to pre- were you working with barcel though yeah we were like trying Ooh. to pretend to be like we were still trying to like go to school and like graduate college so there it's were days further than i got so. yeah so there I were days when dropped out. um like we just i would actually go to class and maybe that was one of those days. I think it was probably one of those days. <laughs> Sometimes but, I choose to go to class. Yeah. Not no, always. because Sometimes. we got these internships, right? And we were like, shit, like we want to be there every day. Like we want to be around. We want people to see us. Like yeah. we want to like do a lot of work. Yeah. And so there'd be some days when I'd be like, oh, you know, I know that this is happening in the office. Uh, I guess I'm not going to this class. <laughs> yeah. And full transparency. We've had a couple drinks before this. So that, let's yeah. just get that out in the open, everybody. Yep. Just but clear. Yeah, yep. yep. there you go. And so we a met a few years ago. We stayed in touch over Instagram. And it was always funny because we had stayed in touch. Fran had never met you. No, like, Instagram interaction, whatever. And I've always been like, let's get Josie this is how it works, on though. the show. We've been we talking about joke. doing this together for, I think, four, four years, years now. Literally, I remember we've been trying to coordinate this forever. The first time we made a trip to L.A., I was like, okay, who are we going to hit up? It was when our pro- our podcast first started. I was when like, was let's hit up Josie. 2018. That was so the first time you came to LA? Yeah. Where was I then? What year are we in? Yeah, yeah. You had, <laughs> like, what day is it? You had some work thing because you couldn't come. You couldn't do the interview. And then it, we went back and forth for so long. And now finally it happened, which I'm so thankful for because I was like, guys, I think it's finally happening. I think yeah. Josie's coming on the it's podcast. We're and here. she's here. I'm here. Right. And the backstory is good too. Like you guys, it's impressive as me, like the outsider, to be like, to meet someone and stay con- like to meet someone once and then stay connected with them for years that's mm-hmm. hard like not a lot of people can do that yeah i mean you i know? also just like i fucked with you i thought you yeah. were really sweet i thought you were kind i thought um there was something about you that felt trustworthy even though you like have a podcast and your yeah. job is to kind of like put you people do, in the hot like, seat you kind of want to tell like, real all your secrets and then you're oh, like oh i do shit. Like, like before <laughs> this prior we sat here and spit all the tea yeah, yeah. for Two like hours. an hour yeah, yeah. An hour and a half. no i, I should have been the podcast in the kitchen over there yeah, exactly yeah. we talk about that all the time like you know, obviously we interview people and off camera, they'll tell us things and whatever. And we just talk and we're like, we're we trustworthy are people. We are cl- so fucking trustworthy. We are I'm just going to put that out there. Because like, the camaraderie of it, of like building with you guys personally yeah. and then on a business aspect is like totally different. It's important to have both of those, like the connections and relationships, the way you guys like hang out with like a lot of the bachelor people. And yeah. like, we just, we just want to be friends. friends. And we also, I know, I love that, making though. new friends. And I think a lot of people come on and they get worried about what, you know, either people will say or will say, but like we, I'm always like on my guest side more than I am being like, okay, oh my God, well, if I post this, it's going to go crazy viral and people are going to freak out. I'm like, no, like she's looked me in the eye and said like, hey, could you really not like pump that up? And I'm okay, 100%. I know a lot of people do appreciate that also. That's super important for people who like it. That's Yeah, like you don't want to have that reputation of being like, ooh, like we're going to do their show and they're going to like fucking put us on blast. Like, no. Yeah, Yeah, I think that there's actually, that's kind of the world we're living in is that people want like a gotcha moment, right? Like like a lot of- Because it sells. I don't blame them. No, I don't blame them either. You (laughs) work the headline and we're the ones talking about it. Maz Lewis going on fucking Call Her Daddy and being like- Oh, this is what happened. Yeah. Like, talk about selling. And Jesus Christ. Everyone wants to know yeah. what's happening. We're like, yeah. we're locked I into listened. this. Ex- no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I feel I like listened. that's where we were like, oh, we rather just be like friends with everyone. So I'm glad we made that yeah. connection. But I feel like that's kind of the person you are. W- would you say that? You make a lot of connections with people. You have a lot of friends. Yeah, you know everyone. 
Uh, I mean, I, I being raised in LA and being raised in this world, uh, in this industry, and having parents run it, I definitely think pe- a lot of people like took me under their wing. Yeah. And I've definitely kind of like met everyone because LA is like one of the smallest, biggest towns in a way. Yeah. Um, and I'm definitely friends. I'm very sociable. I'm very friendly. I'm very um, adaptable uh, to different environments I'm in. But I have. I can count on one hand how many people I trust and how many people I'm close with and people I like genuinely would love to spend time with and just, or even like a girl's night. Like for example, my best friend is Scarlett. I don't know if you guys know Scar or seen her on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, Brandy Melville days is a throwback, I feel like. Flawless, (laughs) stunning human being inside and out. Um, My my, like soulmate, my twin flame, some might say. (laughs) Genuinely. Um, And there's like only a couple of people like that that I can call over and just like have a girl's night with and just talk and just be genuine and you know, like, smoke yeah. weed or have some wine or watch a movie and like even be on our phones when she's on the couch and I'm here and we're on our phones but we just still enjoy each other's yeah. presence isn't that you know? the best when you can hang out with somebody and you don't have to speak to them you don't even talk you don't, don't like, even just talk sit on my couch you just sit on your phone yeah, it's, it's comfortable, comfortable to have there. someone next to you it's yeah. not so lonely you put on a tv show you're both not watching the tv show or talking to each other but you're comfortable yeah. Yeah. exactly but in LA you can't really trust I, I mean I've learned everyone kind of has a a motive and usually it's an it's an ulterior motive um so i just kind of learned that i think being raised with the parents i did i learned that quicker than than yeah. most a lot of people come in from out of town and from you know middle america or europe or wherever it may be um and i just kind of learned a little quicker than yeah. most yeah. i think do you prefer la or new york because i know you lived in new york for a while and obviously Everyone asked me you're that, a model so. and i feel like what do you think is better for modeling, New York or LA? Def- okay, modeling wise, hundred percent New York. Uh, d- it also depends what lane you're trying to execute properly. Like, if you want to get the high fashion, the elevated, more kind of chic fashion level of of the modeling, then New York, obviously, because that's where a lot of the editorials, photographers, um, even Europe, going to like Paris, Milan, London. Um, LA is way more commercial, and I think that if you would like to do more of the commercial side of things than LA but yeah. modeling in general if you want to hit that like elevated supermodel level like you're not I I don't want to talk vague here but like the supermodels are in New York yeah if that makes sense like the yeah. supermodels who do shows New York and fashion week you're exactly the shows the events the ones that you know borderline brand you into a celebrity as in a brand um right is New York but living wise runway models i don't know i love i i la's home i was raised here my whole life and like i really 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 love it but there's something about new york that at first i was intimidated the shit out of me i was like i went to new york when i was 17 18 and was terrified because i had no idea how to get around and trying to maneuver the subway and my living situation at the time like wasn't uh incredible so it it was it was intimidating and it was frustrating and it was defeating at times but once I got accustomed to the city I was like oh I love it like I just loved something about New York and LA is like the opposite everybody's on the go in New York I feel like if you're listening to the show then you've heard our interviews throughout the week of people with LA and we've kind of asked people the same questions just to get the feel because we're east coast people through and through New York New Jersey we're on the go, the sarcasm, the humor is just, you feel like it's different than in LA. It's way, it's way more different. It's, um, and also the work ethic. I feel like people have a way different work ethic in New York and it's more so like whenever, so when I was living in LA and would come to New York, I'd be there for like a month or two at a time, maybe three months when I was younger, I was bi-coastal. And, and I, I just felt like when I was there, I was like, if I'm not doing my job, someone else is gonna be doing it for me. And I have to get up and grind. And there's no, there's not really much sympathy. Like as my agents were like, figure it out, go get there at this time, figure it out, sit there for this many hours, do whatever you have to do. And I loved it. And I thought it built a lot of character and I built, and I think it built a lot of work ethic because I came from a place of like, not really knowing how to work or, yeah. or where I wanted to work exactly. And then I found my, my home in modeling and built a crazy work ethic in New York City. And I feel like that's it builds a lot of character. New York City like fucking shows you who yeah, you people are. are. You're like pushing you, you around of. in New York. Like yeah, on the street, I love nobody, it though. <laughs> nobody cares who you are on the streets of New York City. I feel like people are just sure. walking by. There's no and it's the weather. You sometimes like <laughs> the weather. Yeah, no, it's yeah. No, it is the weather. You get all like, the, the people sure. in LA who are just it's sunshine every day and they're happy. It's like hey, sometimes 
you need a little seasonal depression. You need a little. You like need you, to be snowed in need, for a week. Right, Sometimes like you, you shut the fuck up and get snowed in to be like <laughs> yeah. freezing your ass off Literally. for a few months, and you just appreciate like seasonal you just depression appreciate is real. the good stuff so much more. Hundred percent. When you see some of the bad stuff, like yeah. when that first nice day in April or May like hits. Sometimes in, in February York, you get like, like a sixty-five degree it's, day. In New York City, I kid you not, it's the best thing ever. It's orgasmic. Everyone, <laughs> it's orgasmic. Everyone in New York City go calm down. Calm down. Like, <laughs> no, I'm here for it. Walks go. outside and is like, this is the uh, greatest day ever. Yeah, like, I understand. Goes I out to and that. tries to have like the best day ever. They're like, everyone's day you, drinking. Like, Do you see how warm it is? We gotta go out. We gotta have dinner. We gotta get drinks. We gotta go to the park. So like, true. You know, it's so true. It's you so true. just have so much fun in those moments, and it. It makes up for like the months when you don't leave your house because it's so cold. <laughs> for sure. Totally. And did you live in like a model house? Because I feel like this is something that's talked about, but I never knew anybody who did. Yeah. I, so I lived in a model mm. apartment, but people misconstrue what the model apartment thing is. People think it's a it's a nightlife promoter who will own an apartment and therefore those girls are obligated to go out. That was not at all what I was doing. <laughs> at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even close. She's going um, to the club every night. <laughs> no, I mean, there was a phase of life where I like once I hit a level of success, I was like, okay, we'll celebrate a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Out, and I, yeah. you know, I've Duh. had my moments. I go out. I love to have fun with my friends. But mm-hmm. um, my work ethic hasn't changed. It's only grown. So I always prioritize work. But yeah, so I was in a model apartment that was owned by my agency. So when I signed to um, Next Models and I was 17, they automatically um, was like, come to New York, come to New York City, work, do your thing. Um, and let's see what you got. Like, let's try you out here in the city. And I was in a model apartment that had, it was six girls, um, and it was three girls per room. We all stay in twin beds, and it's owned by the agency, and it's just, it's with a lot of girls who are from different countries, um, speaking different languages, um, having different work habits, eating habits. Like, for example, like, when I, the, I remember... <laughs> Uh, coming to New York and like getting to my first model apartment and the girl I slept next to we all have our own like little twin beds like three per room and she would only drink tea ever (laughs) ever and she would have like morning day night that's it tea tea and she at black tea or green tea I which which flavor was it (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why that's 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 really not important I guess but yeah Um, I'm I'm assuming it was the one that had caffeine so she could like green tea day green tea Earl 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 Black Earl yep breakfast Earl Grey breakfast Earl Grey yep exactly I like tea I don't drink I don't drink coffee do you have a kettle how do you not drink coffee no 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 I, I've, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee either. I need coffee. I'm a coffee gal. I learned. New York got me onto it. Yeah, but this girl was a tea girl. It's, um, yeah, the back thing, to what you were I saying. I just don't like the taste of coffee, but <laughs> not, yeah, back to the tea. To get off on <laughs> fuck coffee. if we like coffee or not. <laughs> I <laughs> love coffee. Tea. When I need it, I don't, I don't like to be dependent on anything ever. Like, um, yeah, so she would only drink tea. Uh, obviously, it was more like dietary, so she could like fit the part of having the measurements, losing weight, being skinny, whatever, maybe... Um, and that Sounds was just awful. like my first, imp- and that was just my first impression of like what it took to, and she was working, she yeah. was fucking working, she was crushing it, she did her thing, and she was working and successful, and um, and I remember I had a, <laughs> I remember I, I'm just so like American and like I had a bowl of cocoa pebbles one night or, or um cocoa, cocoa puffs, puffs. Cocoa yeah, puffs. yeah. <laughs> cocoa, cocoa pebbles. <laughs> Well, that was a thing. That's a thing. It's a thing, but it was not the thing um, I liked. It, oh, the chocolate, chocolate fruity pebbles. pebbles. Chocolate fruity pebbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, those are somewhat okay as well. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news: Josie, trash. Josie prefers cocoa puffs over cocoa pebbles. Cocoa puffs are incredible. Yeah. Favorite um, cereal? I sneaky likes cocoa cinnamon toast crunch. pebbles a lot. Cinnamon toast crunch. But. <sighs> Did incredible. you see what happened? We have, no, what we happened? have to get through the story of what you're telling. Yeah, 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 we yeah. have gone off. This is what happens when you're friends with the people yeah, that you yeah. work with. Is it's that like, you just, we just go off. tangent. Okay. Finish just, the story, then we'll talk about favorite cereals. Yep. Where was I at? <laughs> she <laughs> drank, drank a lot of tea. <laughs> I remember there was a night where I was eating a bowl of Cocoa Puffs, and they were like, you eat that? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I just want some cereal. And they were like, wow, just like so much sugar. And I was like. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's not funny. Were they, sorry, were they like a re- no, but were they the same age as you were same age as you or were they a little bit older? Uh they were this there were there were some younger and some older. Okay. Ne- okay. Never too much older because the modeling niche typically of like the model part when I was in was like 
16, 17 to like 22. Oh, so there's 16 year olds in there. There was a 17. Well, I mean, I was 17. There, oh, was a 17, right. there was another 17 year old. There was like a 19 year old in there. And also, girls go in and out. It's not like yeah. you have like a, a, a secured place of six. There's like, there's, you get in there and there's six, and then one goes over here and one goes over there, and they're all, it's just in and out. So you're getting, it's like, I'm trying to, what can I compare it to? It's just like the most unstable type of household. And then there's like one bathroom, typically. For and like everyone's a two bedroom. sharing it. All the girls are and sharing. And everyone's a and model. A lot of the girls smoke cigarettes. A lot of the girls, like we're all sharing one kitchen, one fridge. Everyone has their own snacks, their own foods. And we're all trying to like just Sigs. properly make this Yeah, all. did you ever get into the SIGs or no? No, I, I, I tried. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I tried. I dabbled. No I, I didn't, I, no, I definitely dabbled, but I just, I, so also for me, I don't have an addictive personality at yeah. all whatsoever. I can, I can do anything or try anything. That's I great. mean, great. I've never really tried that many things. I'm mm-hmm. not like. A, right. Yeah. 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 No, but I kind of feel the same way. Cigarettes. For example, like there was a phase where I was like smoking cigarettes and I was doing it because I was um, alone and I was stressed and I was it would curve your appetite and that's yeah. what all the girls were doing so i tried to smoke cigarettes and i just like i hated it i hated it so much i hate the taste the smell the way yeah. it makes me feel like i'm just um yeah i don't know i just never liked it yeah i grew but up yeah, with my a, parents like chain smoking constantly and i don't get how people like really I, tie on to it it's i never got crazy. it because actually what's kind of funny is now i'm t- talking about my life story but My parents were straight up addicted to cigarettes like my whole life. And then I remember when I was in fourth grade, they went and got hypnotized to not be addicted to cigarettes anymore. that's a thing. I've heard. It's a thing. thing. Yeah. But then... Was it real? My mom, low key, would be smoking cigarettes on the side without telling my dad. She's like, it works. Yeah. And then my... Yes, literally. (laughs) My dad picked her up from work one night and caught her on the side of her job smoking a cigarette. So it worked with for your like, dad. Yeah, it worked for my dad. He stopped. Caught her on the side so smoking funny. cigarettes with her like co-workers. And I remember it was the biggest fight ever when they got home. It was like, we paid this amount of money to get hypnotized and you just went back and started smoking cigarettes. My mom is still addicted to cigarettes. My dad has two we jewels. We spoke to your mom a second ago. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Love you. You were so you shared such kind words. I she's love the you. best. She's gonna cry she's at so that statement. Sweet. She's an absolute hey, angel, mom. no joke. But she is, yeah, she's an angel. Now my dad, he has two jewels like at once. So he doesn't smoke like, cigarettes, but he's on the jewel thing. Once? Yeah, and me, my brother and sister, none of us smoke cigarettes. I've smoked cigarettes I'm a, a lot of times in my life. A few but times, a few more a few than times, I should have. A few times I should, but I've never been addicted to it. I've never yeah, craved it. Never, ever. And so ever. I always find it like, whoa, people really crave that nicotine or whatever it is that's in it. It's like, just a... I can't really speak for uh, that addictive side that people yeah. go through. I think it's just like alcohol addiction, drug addiction, pill addiction, whatever it may be. Sex um, addiction. So, there's so many addictions. Sex yeah. <laughs> could be anything. Porn. It could be anything. Porn. Yeah. Like, yeah. I seem just like, read something today about um. Oh man. You seem like you're like it's a big no. Thing no. You sad? It was, uh, of, right? you no. No. It was you like sad about it. I saw it, and I'm gonna forget who's the guy. Big muscles. That could be Dan Bilzerian. No. <laughs> No, well, you gotta help me out, out of this. all people. You said porn addiction and porn big muscles. Addiction. I was big like, muscles. I'm sorry, Dan pardon me. <laughs> He's in white chicks. He can make his pecs. Oh, 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 oh. Terry Richards. Ter- Terry, 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 Terry Rhodes. Um, Terry. Terry Owens. No, no, no Terrell Owens. Terry, Terry, Wait, Terry, Terry, Terry Cruz. Right. Terry Cruz. Terry Cruz. Go away. Tell Tell lunch trivia. <laughs> Terry Cruz. He had a porn addiction. Was, I read there's an article out today about how this that was a dip- big story. Yeah, <laughs> that I saw it was like Terry Cruz. This podcast has, has nothing to do with me. Addiction and it was <laughs> like a hard time between him and his wife. Fuck my I saw the headline. That's all. That's Josie, I'm so happy you came and we talked about Terry. Listen, Cruz's I would addiction. much rather point the finger at other people than at me today. So <laughs> keep going. Oh man. Anyway, no, well, we're Terry gonna keep Cruz talking about you. Of course, and, I saw it. Yeah. And Terry Cruz has a porn addiction, and we're gonna pray for him <laughs> and hope that he gets worse. I feel like you could be could addicted be worse. to worse things. You of could course. be addicted to fucking crack, bro. Right, exactly. Like heroin. That's got to be worse. That's yes. way worse. I would and also, assume I've never tried. No, so I really know, but like, if he like is in a relationship or he's married or whatever it is, obviously oh, that's hard enough. for that person. Question: His wife. I'm interviewing you now. Okay, hit us. If your boyfriend, uh, if you had a boyfriend of a couple years and he often resorted to porn or mm. just watched porn in general, would you be okay with that? So if you saw on his tab that he had like Pornhub or whatever open all the time. Um, so this is something we actually talked about on 
my other podcast recently because it was the P episode and we do the alphabet and we talked about porn and we talked about like girlfriends getting mad at guys watching porn or how you feel about it. For me, I don't think that I can get mad at my boyfriend for watching porn because I sometimes (laughs) dabble in watching porn. You know, in a relationship, you still watch it. Yeah. I feel Rhea. like I feel like <laughs> no, <laughs> no judgment here. This is no judgment circle. Even though it's going on YouTube, jo- Josie's like, "Are you She's joking?" Like, but I have to say that I already openly no uh, no. You have your mic on or no? No, he doesn't, he doesn't have his mic on. But Noah, Noah, we need your mic. He sat there in this whole podcast where I said way worse <laughs> shit than this, like just talking about like the types of porn that girls watch in general girls watch lesbian porn more I, than like thank god okay i thought it was alone i thought it was like <laughs> you thought maybe you were low-key like, lesbian yeah maybe i don't know why does it turn me on it's lesbian porn exactly it's, there's actually a science to hot. it because i looked into it i think it's, it's because, because girls know how to turn girls on we know the spots of our own body so mm-hmm. when i see a girl doing it to the girl i'm like oh she's got it <laughs> yeah <laughs> she knows and because they're catering to the female body part so it's like exactly. when you see something happening to a vagina lovingly <laughs> oh, lovingly just caressing no, just so think, lovingly caringly. don't you think like straight porn is just like yeah i'm just, they're like, just like i don't want to see it's like and they, the way the guy treats the woman typically is not like porn wise is like not in the respect of what i'd want to see or what turns you on is sometimes i like watch straight porn i watch like fantasy scenes of like the schoolgirl one or like the masseuse or whatever yeah. and i'm just like it's catered They're kind for of the guy. fucking this girl up. No, yeah. it's one hundred percent catered for the guy. So I think yeah. that's why a lot of girls will say they watch lesbian porn because the girl is like caring about the girl. But on the topic of caring about your boyfriend watching porn, I feel like I just it's something that I have to accept. Like if I'm not like I'm away this whole week, is he not gonna jerk off? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. If there's times where you're gone and you're away, but also then like send a little yeah no of course of course i used to get upset with it when i was younger i used to i mean now um i've obviously had a couple of relationships and there was um one relationship where it like really pissed me the fuck off and i was like you're watching another girl and her body and her pleasure and her getting like all worked up and and fucked yeah Yeah. (laughs) literally like and i was like i don't really i'm not i mean i i just wasn't obsessed with the idea and i'd be like you're doing this all the time meanwhile like I'm definitely put now, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, it right. Was just, it yep, just kind of yep. like bothered me. But then also like growing up and the older I got, I was just like, do your thing. Okay. Well, that's kind of how I, I, I was. Do think I, it's think an age I, thing. I think I, I think I care. It has to it, be. It is. I think it's Security matters to, a lot more when you're younger and it becomes like a insecurity about yourself. You're like, oh my God, like what am I doing? Like what am I not giving him that he has to like resort to yeah, that? Or but that's picturing like just, something else when yeah, he sees yeah, me. Like, like, that's just oh, not... That, that's just not the deal, like, at all. Like, it's just so much more of, like... They just want to get off quickly, and that's yeah, that. Yeah, like, it's just a, a vessel. Yeah. It's not personal. Yeah. No. And yeah, I used to be like, just, oh, my God, it's, so, it's right, kind of personal. Right. You it's take like, it personally, and it's just not personal at all. Yeah, well, I, I think, want to be the only one who turns someone on. Like, if we're together yeah, and we're right. in love, I'm just like, you should look at me and look at pictures of me or whatever. If you need a nude, we've been dating for, like, X amount. You know, we're yeah, secure. Yeah, like, I got together. you. Right. I, yeah. I got as you. Look, Trust as me. long as he can still, like... You know what I'm saying? Like if he, he was, could be, he could be watching all the porn in the world, and then if you like, if, as long as he can still get it up for you, like if that's that's the only place where it's a problem. If you're like, oh my god, my boyfriend watches so much porn, and then like when I try and have sex, sex with him, he like he you know can't perform. Then it's like, okay, that's a problem. <laughs> that's that's what I think it is, and I think that's something like a few. I that's a think thing? like when I was like 19, yeah. I I think I definitely had the same thing as you being like oh, you're, like, watching all these other women and, like, like, I'm not good enough for you, but also we'd still have sex all the time and, like, whatever. And then I think it was, like, I would text you about it and text, like, my older friends and and they would just tell me about, they'd be, like, Rhea, like, it is what it is. You know, my older sister, she'd be, like, you just, you know, got to accept it. Some guys do, some guys your sex life, personally, between the two of you is still great, then, like, it's okay. Yeah, yeah if it's, it's not, and then they're doing that, it's like, well, who's really to blame here? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Can't well, fingers. How did we end up talking I about don't, this? I don't even know. I was like, I'm asking you guys. Yeah, yeah I don't even know. Oh, models, porn addiction, tea. Terry Crews. Oh, Terry Crews. And I was like, and it came up to my mind, so I figured, I don't know. That was something I struggled with, honestly, and I was like, I really didn't like the fact that my ex or, or my boyfriend at the time yeah. was watching porn and like getting off to like some other girl i was yeah. like mm-hmm. it, feel, it felt like cheating to me and maybe i just like was young and a bit uneducated and just 
insecure maybe I, I think, think it's long ones we would fight you would get in a massive yeah. fight I think every girl has that moment I would get I so upset exactly. I, would get, I would fucking flip okay. yeah but you're anyways, good at that you're, you're good at onto bigger and better things because yeah. now we're adults and you know we, we you don't care you live and you learn <laughs> you live and you learn but I wanted to mention um obviously you know rough and rowdy your dad fought mm. rough and rowdy it was a whole thing and you know we're not going to get too much into it but I do remember I was tweeting about the fight and I said it in my head, I was like, I don't want to upset Josie. Yeah. I was like, I really I don't. friends. No, yeah. I know. I was like, I don't want to upset Josie. And you tweeted something. You were like, please, I don't want to be involved in this. And, you know, pe- people say fucked up shit online. But there was oh, one. Oh, my tweets. I like, yeah. well, after my dad lost, I like got ripped to shreds. Because I feel like everyone loves to go after um, a close soft spot of the person who's Absolutely. being attacked. And that was me. There's no other soft spot in the yeah. world besides mm-hmm. me to my dad. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was just yeah. easy, easy for the trolls it's on Twitter. It's also barstool to, demographic. And you're in the is spotlight. Fucking, you're, like, you know, whew. yeah, yeah. You're in the spotlight, and like, yeah. you know, it's just it was an easy way to be. But like, it, oh my it, god, it, it literally. Has a, he has a super hot daughter. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But your tweets, I felt for you. I was like, damn. Yeah. This is sad. I hope she doesn't get mad at me for my tweets. Like, obviously, rooting for the person that works at Barstool just because he works at Barstool. Yeah. Whatever. Billy. But I think yeah, Billy. Name, right? yeah. I think the funny thing that came out of it, if we can take anything away from it, was Frank the Tank. If you follow Barstool. <laughs> you know frank the tank he tweeted out this picture photoshopped of <laughs> him and you and it went like viral on twitter i'm gonna i'm gonna show you it there you guys are mom again oh you no t- yeah i know you told her no, that's a busy. screenshot you told her <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that's a screenshot of when she was calling her earlier like, mom you know i'm busy yeah, right yeah. now <laughs> so i uh, will we'll put it in i don't know if you can zoom Amazing. in on the camera yeah but Great. frank the tank yeah. he thought he had a shot with you thoughts <laughs> so this is where i stand with people who like to talk over the internet in general. I just, I, I know that people do it for clickbait, for, for profit, for sales, for attention, for whatever it may be. Um, yeah. And I just don't do it. And I understand that he's making controversy for Barstool to maybe sell more tickets or whatever, which ended up making my dad more money. So who really lost here? Because <laughs> yeah. my dad made like over a million dollars off this fight because y'all fucking boosted it up so much. No, yeah, man. Truly, Frank, that thank you for correct. the money. Yeah. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> you, paid, you, you paid my dad. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, but I don't know. I just think it's tacky. I think people who go above and beyond on the internet to for attention and yeah. for sales is morally weird and it's just not how I stand as a human and maybe that's because I was raised uh in this light a bit and raised within yeah uh this fame spotlight family with attention on me so everything I do is just like like I would never like photoshop a a picture of someone just to gain yeah like uh, traction or on or something whatever, yeah. you know what I mean or whatever I you know yeah, anything yeah. in yeah. that world I I'm just not like that but I also I think everyone's uh demographic is is respectable and I think Barstool's demographic is very interesting and I think Frank doing that was was hilarious I don't I also I never take it personally yeah I don't I ever think it's serious because I know it's not coming from a malicious place at least I like to think that no it's definitely yeah, not, not I would too hope hard, they're not like, no they're not thinking too exactly. hard about everyone's it everyone's thinking yeah. about themselves and like oh how can I do something yeah funny? how exactly. can I make somebody laugh exactly. Exactly. How can I get How likes? can we make more sell, like sell right. more yeah, yeah. sales, sell yeah. more tickets? Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't take it personally. I just like, I think I responded. Yeah, <laughs> I think you said I was you were like, I'm honored. And truly. just to put it like Frank, <laughs> which is a I'm pun like, on Frank the Tank, which I didn't mean to do, but it came out. The <laughs> visual, you your thank pun. you. Yeah, <laughs> the visual of you with Frank the Tank is just like obviously people are gonna laugh at that. No, yeah, I think it's yeah. funny. You know I, I think mean? it's I think it, I think it's funny, and I think it's uh you know we're just we're building up to a fight that's gonna make everything more successful than it was initially so right and i think um taking it lightly is a, is a good place to stand and i don't ever take it personally and it is what it is yeah and i think i'm just like inevitably what am i gonna do oh my god how could you how dare yeah, you yeah. like no i'm gonna be yeah. like oh my god like funny good one like you're so clever yeah. great edit <laughs> like, <laughs> right great photoshop really. skills what am i gonna do yeah fucking take it and know? at the end of the day your dad lost but he also won like you said the money so it's like yeah, I mean, I don't know. My dad does his own thing. He's in his own world, does his own thing, tweets his own stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, he, I think he made good money off it. And, um, you know, I know that he actually genuinely has had a lot of injuries in his life and a lot of pain and a lot of like physical suffering. And for him to even take a fight at this age and this time is, is commendable. So 
Yeah. And, and he made money off it, which is right. something that he needed. I saw your Instagram wants, story yeah. and you were like, you were proud of him. And I thought that was sweet. I'm, all, I'm always proud of him. And like, regardless of our relationship and like how things go down between us personally behind the scenes, I, I, sorry, I hit the mic. Yeah, <laughs> good. Mid like serious moment. I'm like, yeah. ah. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I just, I love him. Like you have one dad, you have one mom and you have, you know, I yeah. just, as, as much as things get tough between us personally, I, I will always respect what he does and, and be there for him as a, as a daughter, family member, whatever. Of course. And that's a great way to look at it. Honestly, I feel like, I mean, what else do you do? You sit around, you bitch and you mope and you hold regret in your heart. Like I would never, ever want to sit around and just like be bitter and be upset. Sure. And I think I learned that from seeing him be so bitter from his past with baseball and just yeah. work related type situations and yeah, I just, I don't know. It's all good. At the end of the day, it's, yeah. all, it's okay. We're I'm going to be okay. I, I, <laughs> you are like such a positive person and not the annoying positive person. Like, I feel like there's like toxic positivity where people <laughs> like rainbows are just, yeah, yeah. Like, they wake up and they're like put up posts on their Instagram story and they're like, every day is a beautiful day. And it's like, like that's it's, not yeah. true. No, there's, that's no. not true at all. But I, I like your outlook on your family and your life and just not really holding grudges because there's a lot of people who have a lot of family issues that don't end up fucking with their family anymore because they're like I'm gonna cut them out but for you it works yeah I mean I there have been times where you you know separate yourself from family Mm -hmm. members because selfishly you need to give yourself what you deserve and I think it is it's unfair to put yourself through more than what you deserve and you can't let someone continue a certain behavior because they need to learn that the behavior at a certain point is not okay and typically the way you show them that it's not okay is by putting your foot down and disconnecting so there have been times where I've had to disconnect from family members to show them that this is not acceptable and it's not okay and I and I hope we grow from this and I will always love you and I will if god forbid anything happens I'm there for you and I love you but you have to have respect for one another. It has yeah. to be reciprocated. It has to be loving and unconditional and kind. So sure. I try. Definitely. It's tough, but I try. And like, you know, like I said, one mom, one dad. Yeah. I'm you only child too. Yeah, so I'm like, definitely. Yeah, I love them. That's another thing. Being an only child, you make it work though. Let's yeah. get into something fun. We have a game. We want to play Never Have I Ever. Ooh. And Fran Oh my God, it. no, wait, I have to pee. Yeah, wait, should we? Can we yeah. yeah. Okay, ring it high and pee. <laughs> A few minutes later. Okay, we're Sorry. back. We're here. Yeah. Can we had a little fun. No, I'm, I'm going to tell the world because I don't want to seem like an idiot all of a sudden. We're high. Yeah, there you go. We'll just get it out in the Maria, open. Maria, we, yeah. we went out for a smoke break. We smoked a blunt. Yeah. Um, and now we're going to play <gasps> Never Have I Ever. I've always wanted to say that I went out on a smoke break. You know but I not mean? for cigarettes because no, we don't no. like them. Yeah, we already like talked we about said. That. But like being oh, like, oh, I'm just heading out for a smoke break at the office. Yep. You know, we're like at people at work. Now we're here. All right, never I'm have nervous. I ever. Let's okay. play it. No, it, it's it's fun. It's not like crazy. Okay, ready? This is the first one. Never have I ever ran into my ex partner while on a date with someone else. I actually have. I have two. You guys <laughs> oh, have? God. Yeah. I'm so jealous yeah. of that. That seems like such a little thrill. It was awful. Terrible. I panicked because Dated I like, it. at the time I wasn't, I was like just kind of like seeing the new person, hang out with them. And I still definitely talked slash loved that last person. Yeah. And it's, I, and I had no idea. And I was so caught off guard and I ran into them. Mine was in a was, restaurant. It's like, you just like, we're making eye con- weird eye contact the whole time. It's the worst. Especially if there's any feelings involved in either yeah. end. Like and it's just, can I ask you guys? Did you think about that person the entire time you were on the date with Fuck somebody else? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> At the same exact time, she goes, fuck no. Yes. 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 I'm fucking Lily. No, uh, not even close. I would have been like, because I like the other, I like the new person. I like the new person. I like the new person too, but I was worried about the old person the whole time. That's oh, to be fair, I was worried answer. about seeing them again, if that oh, makes that's sense. That's cute. Okay. Never have I ever kissed underwater. That's cute. I've kissed underwater. Yeah. I just Everyone drowned just a, a little. I also like choke. Jesus. Keep no, in I mind, just... I'm gonna give you a visual. I have to plug my nose when I swim. <laughs> so oh, if I, I kiss I underwater, do too. I'm like, <laughs> both of you <laughs> plugging your noses and going underwater. Seems yeah, like yeah, it's would like you not even... a good picture at all. No, like definitely not. And it also show seems at the like you get in the way. Your no whole thing. Okay. Okay. I, you gotta like get it up nice. <laughs> it's awful. Friends, oh, okay. Friends all right, ready? Too risque. Ready? Yeah. Wait. No, no, we like the. I mean, never guy. have I ever faked a phone call to get out of a bad date. 
I actually never have done that. I don't think, I don't know if I had the balls to actually like lie. I've that. never been on a date. She, okay, oh, that's a reach. God. Stop. You've been on a date. You know, Rhea gets high. She's like, I've never met a man before. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like she. What do you, you've never gone to dinner with someone? Even like, like. But what? think, no, but think of, well, okay, let's play this back. I've been dating my boyfriend since <laughs> I was 19. Yeah. I guess I went on a date with him. Yeah. Before we started dating. 100%. But I feel like I never, well, I guess I, you know, the movies, but that's not a real date. That's when you're too young to go to dinner. Have you been on a fucking date or not? <laughs> I think I have. I think I have. I think. I think that you was one hundred percent been on a date. That's oh absolutely now. ridiculous. You have been on a date. Hank would be so mad. Yeah, like if what? I said, I've never, never been, been on a date. date? I've been on. Everyone's gonna come at Hank's I go, neck. I go so on you know. a date every week. Le- yes, you actually do. Okay. So ne- what was the question? <laughs> um, never have I ever faked a phone call to get out of a bad date. Okay, no, I've never done, done that. that. Okay. Never have I ever told a friend to break up with their partner. All yes. the time. I had one initial person and partnership come to mind, and it was just like, yeah, no. So you, sometimes you have to. Yeah. Because they, they're blinded by it. A lot of my yeah. friends have been like, what are you doing? You don't That's see That's always it. a what conversation, too. People are always like, ooh, like when you don't like your friend's significant other, do you say something or you just, do you just like hold it back? I always say something. Always. I don't <laughs> say it until it's to a point where yeah. it's, it's like so, so bad. Unfair yeah, yeah, yeah. To the, to the yeah. girl or my best friend. It's so maybe. obvious that it needs It's to, like disrespect. Yeah. It's like embarrassing at that point. Then you're like, listen. <laughs> right. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. talking about it. <laughs> Never have cool. I ever been friend zoned. Yes. <laughs> Is it just gonna be me? Oh, no, you no, two wait, fucking just, hot me, bitches! You're okay. doing it so fast. Give me a second to no, think. No, I'm just, just thinking. Just, am I screaming? No, so <laughs> I'm screaming. Keep turning down the mic when I get close. If I'm you like, have to ask if you're screaming, we all Fran and I scream all the time. I scream so bad. Uh, I got so mad at my boyfriend have the other weekend though? because um, we met with new people. <laughs> No, I'm just, we met what? with new people and we were walking home. What does home. that mean you met with new people? Um, you and your boyfriend? No, no, me and my boyfriend met with <laughs> the, swingers no, 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 we just moved. We, we just, made another couple, no, look, listen, couple friends. Yeah, we just moved and we were meeting with the owners of the apartment we moved okay, into. Okay. It's a condo, so we were meeting with that. <laughs> this is amazing, new friends. And Every podcast we yeah, talk about this apartment. I know, I know, I know. I had to slip it in there. But anyway, I, they um, had some wine for us. We we're having a nice time. And my whole family, everybody jokes, I sco- like I have one sip of alcohol, I start screaming. Okay, I've been told the same thing. And when I'm drunk, I get like really loud and Oh god, we were but walking home and he was like he looked at me and was like, "Fran, like I like you know, I got to tell you you just got to be careful with the yelling like you were yelling at these guys." I can't wait to get drunk and Nobu in and, 20 minutes. And me, I <laughs> literally you, No, I'm dead serious. It. Like I I got so mad and he was like, "You need to, And then he was like, "You need to stop getting mad at me for like not serious things." Cuz I was like, "What do you mean I yell at men?" <laughs> That's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I was like, what do you mean? I started yelling. He was so like, cute. he was like, Fran, you were again? talking <laughs> very loudly to these very nice people. And I was like, I, I was like, I don't notice in the moment. I can't control it. So yeah, oh, because whatever. fuck anyway. it. Fuck overthinking what yeah. you're doing. Anyway, Although I, I have been friend zoned. Overthinking. Have, all right, I, let's get real. Neither of you have been friend zoned ever. If you give me a second to think about it. <laughs> just, I just feel like here's the thing unbelievable i feel like anybody no this is gonna sound uh, no, no this zone. is gonna sound so <laughs> fucked up i don't even want to say it to be honest i may have to i may have to cut it out after you have to tell me Josie's how is too hot how to zone. how conceited but I guess so this are you is now. no i was gonna say <laughs> so are you now what? this is super conceited and so we'll cut it out if you guys think it sounds too conceited i have never truth, been like if i wanted to hook up with somebody it happened like sex must be nice <laughs> I honestly, yes, but I also haven't had sex with many, <gasps> like a lot of people. I, I've made out with so many more people than I've like had sex with. Oh, of course. As you should. And so when I mean like, when I'm thinking like, like everywhere. <laughs> if I want to like, <laughs> like if I wanted to make out with somebody, it was happening. That sounds fucked I, up. I that, feel you. I feel you. I feel you. It's, I don't it's like rare that. that I do want to hit that, especially when I'm out drunk and doing my thing, like. Once in a blue moon, I'll be like, oh, I'll see him from across the room. I'll be like, it's a target for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but but rarely do I ever actually do it because yeah. like then I like get closer to the situation. I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. It's, just you not, know, like, it's not as And enjoyable. I would just much rather not. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Never. <laughs> friend didn't like any of those. I, yeah, look, I, I've been friend zoned brutally in college, but okay. That's fair. <laughs> college guys, is the appropriate time. But though. if you yeah. were really close friends. 
No, it was one of my, yeah, it was one of my very close friends, but. Uh, so but, maybe you guys, re- I, I feel like maybe if you, I've never tried to like hook up with one of my really close friends. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not getting friends zone because I'm not trying to hook up with like my friends. Yeah. There you wow. we go. Well, you go. next question. <laughs> Next question. I wanted to hook up with them before we were friends, but then we became friends. And <laughs> I know. I was like, that doesn't apply to everyone. Yeah, I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Tell us the story. No. Um, okay. Never have I ever had a crush on a fictional character. Oh, my oh God. My Does that God. mean like an actor? Like Chuck Miles? Yeah, like a fake character. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Was a cartoon character, Danny Phantom. <gasps> okay. Well, I didn't go cartoon I didn't do, character. I, I said fictional character. <laughs> I didn't have good Danny Phantom. <laughs> My first thought was like John B. Like I wasn't going like John B. Of yeah. course, but Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom. Car- if we're going cartoon, I'm trying to think. Interesting. I think Chuck Bass is my like. Yeah. Wait, Chuck you know, Bass. really funny story. I'm gonna spill tea Nathan. right now. I don't know if we're gonna. Can you can you approve it by me yeah. before we use it? Yeah. We're using it. So I met Ed, Ed Westwick um, with mutual friends out and about whatever, and we were just out, you know, hanging out, partying, doing our thing, drinking, having a couple of drinks. And we went back to an after party or a place where we were around a small table. And I was like, <laughs> can you please be Chuck Bass for a second? <laughs> I you told him to get like, into character. Can you not? I was like, pretend I'm Blair. <laughs> Stop. And did he we say? We were at a point. What of, did he say? He you were, you were, <laughs> you were fucking I, I, role I playing, but he was like, I don't role play. No, I was just yeah. like. I don't know. We were just drunk and having fun. Whatever. Yes, I was like, yes. can you please for a second, like just for my like childhood yes. and the nostalgia that I would have asked the same can thing. Can you please be Chuck Bass for a second? And he was like, I think he may- maybe did it for like a second. Also, we were like, keep in mind, not in our rights. Mind. Right. He's exactly. also British in real life. So like he, he can yeah. very much like turn on I'm the on Chuck it. Bass and turn Weird. it off. Yeah. yeah. I can say that 100% Francesca Mariano would Drunk screaming, ask Chuck Bass to get into character at Chuck 100%. Bass. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I think I've actually so had more when, crushes on fictional characters than we, I have real life people. When we were with the Jonas Brothers, <laughs> oh my god, I saw you guys tweeting about them. Like Fran lot. was, didn't they fall? Did, okay, did, did we interview you guys? guys? No, but Fran was telling them things. I was like, Fran, loose lips. I had a couple <laughs> drinks, and when I have a couple drinks, I can't <laughs> shut the fuck up. We need to get her. It's on not only on, like drink it's up. like have a couple drinks and then put me with the man that I was obsessed Which with one? for Nick? decades like like nick. Nick? nick me too and that was, and that was, was my pick like, she'll fight you on the spot don't even act like you like nick more than fran no, no, don't I even act now. like no it, it, it was like, like i the fact that i was even able to form words was impressive that's so all that's all i'm gonna say about that wait what was what, you met them yes they yeah, came we, on our we show did an interview we toured the course brewery with them cheers we 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 cheer uh cheers we did cheers them but we toured the Coors brewery with them in denver and then they came on our podcast afterwards we also saw them play at penn state and then we all wow. went to a bar at penn state together after how did this all they how did this all happen um well one i'm obsessed with them and i told our talent booker that i would literally die to have them um <laughs> on the show um but they it actually all started with uh Barcel had a best bar college ba- uh, college tournament. I'm going to do this spiel in two seconds. Everybody's best listening is like, we've heard, we've heard of this about a million this. times. Okay. okay. All right. So best bar competition. It was like March Madness tournament. You vote for colleges and their best bars. Penn State has one called Champs. Best Shout- bars. Best bar. Yes. Okay. Shout out Champs. We love Champs. Champs. Um, the, the, the man who runs Champs. Is, Champs is a bar. Yes. yes. Champs in is a Penn bar. State. Okay. At Penn State. Is like childhood best friends with John Taylor, who is the Jonas Brothers. Like he was their guitarist and then he's on their management team. Oh, and yeah. so all of a sudden, Joe Jonas started tweeting about Champs and the using like hashtag Barstool Best Bar. Like, and we were like, why is Joe Jonas involved in this? Like what's yeah. happening? And so we got involved being like, well, if Joe Jonas wants Champs to, to win, we want Champs to win. <laughs> So um, the guys at Champs reached out to us and said, hey, come when the Jones Brothers are playing at Penn State. We went. Um, we had, we, you know, had great tickets. <laughs> we went back to Champs after. They came back with us. We had drinks. <laughs> we chatted. We met their manager. And we said we would really love to have them come on our show. Wow. Um, so how do we make that work? Now having drinks. It was good networking. Yeah, and then their manager, you know, reached out to our talent booker and said, hey, we, um, the Jones Brothers are going to do this limited edition bottle of Coors Light. They're going to be out in Denver. Wow. We can announce it with the girls. If you want to send um, Rhea and Fran out to Denver, we'll hang out at Coors. You can do the interview and we'll announce like that they're doing this beer. 
And it worked because Coors was also mm, a sponsor That's of our show. That's the only way I ever heard of it was through yes. you guys. So you guys are exactly. So, it. Yep, yep. So <laughs> there it was you go. through us. And we were like, wow, this is perfect. They're a sponsor for us and they love Coors. And it was just a match made in heaven. <laughs> a beautiful, beautiful love story between us and the Jonas Brothers. Yeah. All right, let's do. Okay, I'm going to do <laughs> one more. <laughs> two more, two more okay, well, quickly. Okay. Okay, hold on. Oh, some of these are like Get some good ones. I saw you know. the stupid one that was. No, out I know. Like, I'm never I'm have I ever looked under the stars. It's like what? what? Ooh, it's supposed to be like never dirty. have I ever dated someone ten years older than me. Are you trying to shoot at me personally, <laughs> Fran? <laughs> Just say I it was. to my face. I think she was. You did say I it to my was. Face. <laughs> say it to her face right now. Um, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Tens yep. the cap. Um, is yes it though? <laughs> for me personally is it, is it the game I, I i mean i feel like age truly truly is a number and granted there's i there's only so much connection that can be built like true genuine connection but i've heard so many stories that are like girls dating like way older way yeah, the older 85 year olds dating the like the 20 really year old. up yeah. there yeah, yeah, but yeah. they happen to be billionaires majority of the time so i'm just like Right. It's really happening here. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, she should I'll take a sip that. of that. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never have I ever. Um, I just skipped it. Now I got to remember what it said. Oh, called someone, called a partner the wrong name. No, I've actually never done that. No. What if you didn't remember what that partner's name was? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> a full on partner? No, 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 um, not full on partner, but like somebody just at some point, like one of the first couple of times that you were like hanging out with them, hooking up with them, whatever, and you and you you went to say their <sighs> name and it wouldn't come out. <laughs> no, my friend knocked on the door to make sure I was okay or that we were like good, whatever, and I was like, what's his name again? <laughs> oh no, uh, no, it was Mike. <laughs> Well, at least you guys it had was a in really, the beginning stages. We ended at up, least you guys had a long, like, like, great relationship after that. It, no, incredible, no. But that was just like, does that count? Maybe cut that. <laughs> <laughs> we can end on that note. I, I, I like ending on that note. She's Unless like, I'm starving. Yeah, no, Fran's I, like, please, no. can we go eat? No. What are you pausing on right now? Oh, no, now? I was looking to see what else was on there, and I... I Nothing good? good? Yeah, those were, I think those were good ones. Yeah, well, Josie, we're not going to cut that out, because now we have to keep that as our <gasps> last one. Sorry. <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> I can, I'll do one more. I was drunk. Okay, okay, we'll do one more. I could do okay. this all day. The game stuff, I'm like. I know. It's like, we gotta, we gotta eat. We haven't eaten all day. No, we need to Never eat. have I ever dated someone twice. Oh, I have. Like, relationship. Relationship, breakup, then date them again. Okay, but like, how long is a breakup? Like, a real breakup? Like, a year? A real breakup. Like, a year. Like, you break up for yeah, like a we're year. Yeah, we're gonna label that a year. No. Never. No. I mean, we, we've we dabbled with the idea, but it never yeah. ever like it. What? I actually, what, I Rhea? What now? <laughs> what? I don't even know. I just No, I, I tried. Like, the word because, like, dabble, we've said it a trillion <laughs> times. Yeah. It's just appropriate. It's appropriate for every wet. occasion. You're, you're yep. just getting your toes oh, I'm wet just, I'm bit. just dabbling We're with my foot over there. And yeah, exactly. Getting yeah. our toes wet. Exactly. Okay. No, that, was like the, that was the end of Never Have I Ever. That was the end of Never Have I Ever. Josie, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for making the trip. I'm so glad this finally making happened. 20 yeah. minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes while you were late. <laughs> It was actually 45 minutes. Yeah, so let's it actually worked out today. well because we were running so We were late as well, too. so it, it worked. Just, it all worked. But thank you so much for coming on. This yeah. was a blast. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. That wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. We are happy to be back in New York City soon enough. Soon enough. I won't even say it, but soon enough. Everybody, yeah. we love you. Have a great week, and we will talk to you all on Wednesday. <laughs>